In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Fourth Armory templates and mandrel to make a reproduction of the US 1855 expanding ball cartridge. To get started, you're gonna need two kinds of paper. The first kind you're gonna need is a lightweight masking paper. And you can get rolls of this from your big box home improvement store. It's about the consistency of newsprint and the brown color matches what we see in surviving examples. You're also going to need a, a heavier uh, masking paper that's also available at the big box home improvement stores. And this is just more of a construction paper type of consistency. And this is for making the stiffener for the powder chamber. So to get started, take a template. And this is the stiffener template for the powder chamber. And use a razor knife and keeping your fingers out of the way. Cut out a piece of paper. There's the stiffener. And this is the outer wrapper and it is made from the lighter weight paper. And of course in this video I'm only cutting out one at a time, but there's nothing to stop you from cu cutting out multiples at a time just by folding up the paper. And you can probably get 10 at a time, depending on how sharp your razor knife is, probably. So these are the three pieces of paper that make up the cartridge. These two pieces make up the powder chamber, and this is the outer wrapper. So to get started, we're going to position our inner wrapper for the powder chamber and the stiffener, and you're going to position them like so. So you want the outer uh, wrapper of the powder chamber to extend beyond the stiffener. And then we're going to take the mandrel you want to position the flat end of the mandrel flush with the edge of the stiffener. And then you just roll them up. So now the ordinance manual suggests paste, but I find Elmer's glue will work, but you can use paste also. You just push in the ends of the excess paper until you get these two little wings. And then take a dab of glue and smear it in there and then fold in the wings as shown and that is the powder cylinder and this is what the gunpowder sits in inside the cartridge and of course these need to dry and it doesn't take them long just a few minutes but i happen to have some already made and so we'll use those so to finish the assembly of the cartridge you take the mandrel with the powder chamber and the outer wrapper. And then you need a bullet. So in period, the bullet would have been sized and lubricated with uh, a lubricant that was one part tallow to three, part bees three parts beeswax. But uh, of course this is not sized nor lubricated, it's just for demonstration. So, to complete the cartridge, you want to position the bullet and the powder cylinder as shown, and you want to leave a half inch or so of paper sticking out beyond the nose of the bullet. And then we're just going to wrap them together. Like shown. The next step is to choke and tie the nose end of the cartridge. So to do that, I've created a little choking table here. It's just a scrap piece of wood with a dowel secured in it and some string and another dowel to make a choking cord. So to use the choking cord, you simply position the string about where the nose of the bullet ends, put your finger over the end of the cartridge and just pull the string tight. And that's gonna make a flower type arrangement on the end of your cartridge. 
And next, you want to use some three ply linen thread or cord and use two half hitches to secure the end of the cartridge. And then we trim off the excess and then fold down the flower over the nose of the bullet. So that is the completed cartridge. Now these would be, have been charged with 60 grains of musket powder. So that's what we'll do. And then to finish the cartridge, we pinch the sides of the outer wrapper down to the le level of the powder stiffener chamber, fold the tail over, and then fold the sides of the tail into the middle. Give them a good crease. Fold it, the tail back over itself, down along the side of the cartridge, and give it a little pinch so that it wants to hold its form. So this constitutes the 1855 U.S. Expanding Ball Cartridge. The 1855 cartridge was probably a superior cartridge to use than the 1862 that followed it. The 1855 cartridge, because of this internal stiffener, uh, and also because the, there's only one layer of paper that the soldier had to tear through to expose the uh, powder. The British found the same problem with their Enfield cartridge, and they later altered their design to move away from two layers of paper also uh, because it's noticeably harder to tear the tail off. In addition, uh, the 1855, because of this uh, powder cylinder, once you do tear the tail off, this tends to keep the ragged end of the cartridge open and exposed so the powder more easily flows out of the cartridge into the, into the muzzle. So it's an easier cartridge to use than the 1862. But as we can see, it requires two different kinds of paper. It requires three different patterns of paper, and it's you know probably more fiddly to put together than the simple 1862 style. So it's easy to see why the evolution happened as a wartime expediency. But this is the 1855 style, and this style of cartridge continued to be produced by both uh, Union and uh, Confederate arsenals, you know, pretty much for the entire duration of the war, even after the advent of the 1862 style. So. This is how we use the 4th Armory templates and former to make the U.S. 1855 expanding ball cartridge.